Hello, I'm Paolo Marzioli. And I'm Lorenzo Frezza. From Sapienza University of Rome. And welcome to the fourth video tutorial for the SDR Play course in understanding radio communications using SDRs. This video is linked to lecture 7 of our course, receiving data from a dummy transmitter part 1. During lecture 7 and lecture 8 of the course, the students will learn to receive, demodulate and decode some data that you will transmit through an inexpensive radio transmitter. These students will use nothing more than an SDR player SP radio receiver and a GNU radio companion for the reception and interpretation of the data. During lecture 7, the students will start from the empty canvas on GNU radio companion until arriving to the demodulation of the dummy transmitter data. While in lecture 8, we will arrive finally to the interpretation of all the data. I immediately hand over to Lorenzo that will show you the content of lecture 7. Thank you, Paolo. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is connect our transmitter to the Arduino and the Arduino to the computer in order to generate the signal that we need for the lecture. We are going to follow the guide that we provide in the slides to connect the uh, transmitter to the Arduino. We'll connect the ground pin to the ground pin of the Arduino, the power to 5 volts since we're using an Arduino Uno, and then Slave input to D11, slave output to D12, and chip select to D10, clock to D13, and interrupt to D2. We can then connect and the Arduino USB to the computer. First thing we're going to do is make sure that the correct script is running on the Arduino connected to, to the transmitter. In this case, we chose to transmit at 423 MHz with the 1200 baud. Let's upload the script to the Arduino. and then we can switch on the RSP and we see a signal at around 423 MHz actually a little bit less which is our transmitter you see that if we change the configuration on the Arduino file for example let's increase the, the baud rate we see that the signal changes. In this case, the time of transmission became a little bit shorter because the baud rate is doubled. Okay, let's switch back to 1200 baud for the moment. And let's try to receive the sixth signal on an already instead of a SDR1. So let's stop and close SDR1. And let's remove the old script. and start over. So we want to add an RSP1A source block. This is the RSP we are using. And let's connect it straight to a Kutigui sync to see if we are actually able to receive the signal. The frequency, we can set it directly to 432.97 MHz. Let's press play. And yeah, we can see the signal in the center. If we increase the FFT size and zoom in on our signal, we see that it is uh, around 10 kHz on one side and yeah, around 10 kHz on the other, so around 20 kHz in size. So we want to limit the bandwidth of the signal to this 20 kHz of signal. And we want to ignore any frequency which is above the 10 kHz on one side. By using a low pass filter of uh, cutoff frequency 10 kHz, any frequency above 10 kHz and below minus 10 kHz will be attenuated. So let's add a low pass filter by searching for it on radio. Mm -hmm. 
and let's set the cutoff frequency to 10 kilohertz. Transition width could be a tenth of that, 1 kilohertz. And let's press play. Perfect, now we have our signal, more or less in the middle of our bandwidth. If we have some uncertainty in the frequency, we can increase the bandwidth. For now, let's try to set it to keep it at 10 kilohertz of, of uh, cutoff frequency, so 20 kilohertz of bandwidth. And uh, we still have all this bandwidth unused, which we don't want. Uh, so we can decimate the signal. They can do a decimation of uh, 50, uh, which means that from 2 MHz we'll get down to 20 kHz, exactly what we want. Uh, we can use a variable for this. Let's use a variable called DEC, which we will create. So let's look for variable. Let's call it DEC and give it a value of 50. Then, of course, on the QT GUI sync, the bandwidth, which is the sampling rate, we set it to sampling rate divided by DEC, because the decimation divides the sampling rate in the input by its value. Let's press play. And now we have, you see the signal, which sits comfortably in our bandwidth. You actually see that the signal is not centered. It is slightly on the right. It is around two kilohertz on the right. So let's fix the frequency so that we tune exactly on the signal by moving 2, ki two kilohertz on the right. Let's press play. And there you go. Now we have our signal, which is around 20 kilohertz in size, inside a low-pass filter, and around only 10 kilohertz of extra bandwidth on each, on each side. Now we have isolated our signal. We could make the low-pass filter a little bit tighter to go around our signal, uh, but this is enough. Let's try to demodulate the signal. We know that this signal is FM modulated, so we can use an FM demodulation block. A generic block that we can use for this is actually called is actually called quadrature demod. The quadrature demodulation is a kind of FM demodulation which can be used to demodulate digital signals. Actually, let's use the QTQ sync to actually see the output of the quadrature of the mod. We see that the output of the quadrature of the mod is a, a, a real signal. This is because if you demodulate a complex FM signal, you get a real output, which usually is audio, as we saw before when we are trying to receive the FM radio. Uh, but in this case, the, the real value, the real signal, will be our data signals, which are not complex, but are, are real. Let's switch the QT GUI sync to float and connect it to the quadrature demand. If we open up the settings, we see it has the parameter of the gain, which is used when demodulating the signal. We we'll actually look at the documentation to see actually what the gain does. Um, but in this, uh, in this case, we can just set it to 1. It would be enough. In most cases, one is um, is appropriate. Let's press play. And at the moment, we are watching the frequency domain, but since we are demodulating the signal and we are getting a real value, we actually want to look at the time domain because this doesn't contain any useful frequency domain data. So let's go to the time domain. And you can see that we are actually demodulating the correct signal. We see a square wave, which means that the signal is correctly demodulated. And usually, when the signal is high, this represents a 1, and when the signal is low, it represents a 0. This is not always the case. Sometimes it, it's the transition that represents a 1 or a 0. Uh, but we know from the in, uh, on this transmitter, a high value is a 1, and a low value is a 0. Since we are only watching at the time domain, we can actually replace the QT GUI sync with a QT GUI time sync, uh, which only shows the time domain. So let's disable this block by right clicking and choosing disable. And let's connect the QT GUI time sync and selecting the right sampling rate. Let's press play. 
and now if we click with the middle mouse a menu appears and we can use this to stop the signal and watch the data let's stop when some data is shown and you can see that it's a signal that goes from around minus one to around one uh, but there is a lot of noise you see that it is not a square wave there is a lot of noise when the transition happens and when uh, it is a high value and a low value you see that it oscillates a lot but already we can see for example this is a one this is a zero zero this is a one a zero this is probably three or four ones so we are in the right direction we need to remove a little bit of noise to remove some noise we could use another low pass filter applied on the signal itself on the data itself we know that this signal is at 1200 baud so that at most the frequency of this signal should be around 1200 hertz let's put a low pass filter in between the quadratic the mode and the Kutugui sync and uh, we will want to set the cutoff frequency to a little bit more than half of the baud rate we can actually create a variable which we'll call it baud and we know that the baud rate is 1200 so let's set the cutoff frequency to around half of the baud way times 1.5 transition width it could be uh, around 300 hertz these values are um, mostly arbitrary for the transition width so we see that the cutoff frequency arrives at around 900 hertz let's press play and there is some problem with the signal we actually set the wrong sampling rate because the default is 2 megahertz but the sampling rate is actually divided by the decimation so let's divide the deck and let's try again perfect now let's stop on our signal and you can see now that the high and low transitions are very smooth and very clear there is no more ringing there is no more oscill big oscillations on the values okay it looks a lot better um, one thing we want to do is make sure that the signal is centered around zero you can see that it is not always the case uh, in our, especially if we get the wrong frequency uh, then the signal will be not centered around zero let's let's for example change the frequency and see the effect if we now press play and stop on our signal we see that the signal is heavily shifted towards the one side this means that we can we could get a zero bit which is higher than zero and this does not register as a zero bit to make sure that the signal is actually centered around zero even if the frequency is slightly wrong we can correct for the bias uh, this offset between the zero uh, value and the average is a bias in the signal to correct this bias we can use a DC blocker what the DC blocker does let's switch to float is remove the bias from the signal by removing the average value let's try and stop on our signal Uh, but you can see that now it doesn't look quite right uh, sometimes the signal goes too close to zero uh, this is because we set the length of the DC blocker to 32 which is the default value which means they will do the average of 32 samples but uh, we actually want to do the average over a long period of time because this bias does not change with time uh, in and 32 samples is, is too is too low let's try to put it to something like 10,000 which means we do the average of 10,000 and remove this average from the signal 
let's stop on the signal if we can and you can see this more or less centered around zero let's fix the frequency anyway just to make sure that we are centered and let's see what else we can do to improve this signal one thing that we notice is that this signal is not a square wave it is actually very rounded this could be actually a problem uh, because we want to receive a square wave but by cutting off higher frequency we actually made it impossible for this to be a square wave uh, so we want to do some manipulation to make it back to make it be a square wave there are other ways to achieve this and I will try a simple one uh, which is to use a threshold block and add constant block and a multiply constant block and you will see why in a second let's switch the types the threshold block if we open the documentation it tells us that if the signal exceeds a value it will output a one until the signal falls below another value then it outputs a zero we can set it so if we set the low to zero and the high to zero when the signal is higher than zero it will output a one when the signal is lower than zero it will output a zero so this will make any sample which is above zero a one and any sample which is below zero a zero then we actually get an output which goes from zero to one but we want an output that goes between minus one and one uh, this is because the processing that we will do later requires a signal which is zero mean so the average must be zero and it must go ar from around minus one to around plus one so we will add a constant to the output of the threshold and this constant will be minus 0.5 this means that the signal will go from the the low value of the signal will go from 0 to minus, uh, minus 0.5 and 1 will go to 0.5 if we then multiply the signal by 2 we will get an output which goes between minus 1 and 1 which is what we want let's see the output of this let's stop on our signal it is now harder to discern what is the signal and what is the uh, the noise because all the signals are between minus one and one uh, but anyway you see that the signals are constrained to be either minus one or one now the only thing that's left to do is to turn this into a bit stream so we know for example let's say that this one is one bit and this one will likely be a one then the next bits will be probably two zeros because you see the length of the signal is double the length of this one so we'll need to some way to transform this data to one zero zero one 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 zero 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 one 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 etc to do this we'll need to use uh, some synchronization method that we will see in the next lecture so that's all for lecture seven we have arrived uh, up to the demodulation of the dummy transmitter data. We will start from here during lecture 8 and arrive to the interpretation of data. We hope that you'll find this video useful for setting up the course with your students. We remind you that all the materials can be downloaded for free on the Ask the R Play website and at the link that you will find in the description of this video. Thank you very much for your attention and see you soon for uh, lecture 8 and the fourth video tutorial.